Hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dwayne. I got a video for that. Kimball, United States Army veteran and retired VA rating specialist. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you to the VA's website and sharing an article they posted about how to avoid DBQ scams. Now, after reviewing this article, there's some information I agree with in the article, and then there's some information that I disagree with because I feel the VA omitted some very valuable information. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, everyone, today's video, the VA posted an article on their website, how to avoid DBQ scams. Now, before I get into today's video, make sure you click the link in the description section and get signed up for our educational webinar next month how to win your VA claim. Now, again, the VA posted this article. There's some things I agree with, and there's some things I disagree with because I feel that they omitted some information. Now, someone, meaning myself, that was trained by the VA to review DBQs to make sure they're actionable and sufficient for rating purposes because all raiders have to go through this training because they're rating these cases based off of DBQ. So you, the veteran, you have to make sure you get educated and you understand that the DBQ that you're submitting is actionable and sufficient. So let's go ahead and get into this article. So here, this is the uh, article the VA posted. I will put the link in the description section for you so you can go back and look at it, read it. And let me know what you think about it, okay? Now, how to avoid DBQ fraud scams. Are you a veteran seeking disability compensation benefits, okay? So it goes off and it says, due to the rise of disability benefit questionnaire scams, VA wants to ensure veterans, including those who choose to have their private health care provider, complete a DBQ, are appropriately equipped with the information they need to submit DBQ successfully, okay? So... What they're telling you is right here, it says, including those who choose to have their private health care provider complete a DBQ. So if you're talking to a VA employee and they tell you that your private examiner cannot complete a DBQ, they're lying to you because here on the VA's website, they're telling you that they can. Now, again, it has to be completed per VA guidelines. But before I go to the next paragraph, this link here. Um, you can click on it and it will take you to the VA's website where you can download the DBQs. And here it is. OK, this is uh, and I'll put this link in the description section as well. It says public disability benefit questionnaires, DBQs. Now you have to figure out, OK, which body system do I need this separation health assessment DBQ? That is for active duty personnel only. OK. So right here it says benefits, delivery, and discharge, BDD claims. But then you have cardiovascular, dental and oil, okay, ear, nose, and throat, genitary, gynecological, infectious disease, musculoskeletal, neurological, nutrition, psychological, respiratory, okay, aid and attendance or housebound, SMCs, okay. So you can come here and download the DBQ that you need. Now, I, I would suggest to anyone, do not go to random websites and download these documents. I don't even house uh, these documents on my website. Now, under our resource link, we give you the link to come here to the VA's website. That way you get the most updated documentation or DBQ. All right, let's keep going. A DBQ is a streamlined medical examination form designed to collect medical evidence relevant to a claim for benefits. All right, they're absolutely right. I agree with that. Then it goes on to say the last paragraph, veterans are entitled to a no-cost disability examination by VA if an examination is deemed necessary to the claim for benefits. Now, this is what I disagree with. By VA, if an examination is deemed, who is deeming a VA examination necessary when you submit an actionable or sufficient DBQ? There are a lot of VA employees they don't understand 38 CFR 
3.326 subpart B and subpart C. They don't take the time. I don't to go out and look at the regulation. I don't know if they're being trained on it. But if the DBQ and Nexus statement is actionable or sufficient, why would it be deemed necessary for a CMP exam? You're just prolonging that claim and adding to the backlog. Okay. Now, VA uh, wants veterans to be aware of individuals and companies marketing the service of completing DBQs. Don't be fooled by companies advertising they have a special relationship with medical professionals and can guarantee the veteran a benefits award. When a veteran uses for-profit DBQ, uh, DBQ companies, the fees may be costly. I disagree with this entire, well, majority of it. It is a section that I do agree with, okay? Let me break it down. What I don't agree with is the VA saying be aware of individuals and companies marketing uh, service of completing DBQs. You contracted with private companies like QTC, LHI, VS Service, many in the VA, and they, they have billion dollar contracts. Billion with a B. So you're marketing these companies because they got a contract. And a lot of those examiners are not doing it the right way. And we're going to get into that in a minute, meaning they're not completing these DBQs correctly and they're not being held accountable. OK, because I do videos about what these private examiners are supposed to be doing and they're not doing it because the veterans are coming back and say, oh, wait a minute. I didn't know that. They told me, oh, they don't have to do it because they got all this experience and wrong. OK, so. It says, don't be fooled by companies advertising they have a special relationship with medical professionals. Now, I know medical professionals that complete DBQs and nexus statements. Veterans, we're not stupid. We have a choice to either use a particular examiner for a DBQ or not. That is up to you, okay? Now, what I do agree with is the guarantee part. Nobody can guarantee you benefits. I don't care if you have a law firm and they send you to some doctors that they know. It is not a guarantee. And I think, in my opinion, I think one of those reasons is you have several VA employees under VBA, the compensation, that are not advocates for veterans. And in their mind, oh, you went and paid for this. Well, the VA went and paid for it. It's done preventing you from going to a doctor and say, hey, this is what I have going on. This is what I'm trying to do. Can you help? Here's my evidence for you to review to make a determination. That's what all these other third party contractors do. Let's keep going. So part of that I agree with and part of it I don't. All right. It says VHA and VA contract examination vendors reduce claims processing time by increasing access to examinations. I agree with this part from this standpoint. Back when I first started rating and adjudicating my claim, the wait times for an exam was like a year. A lot of veterans, some of our clients, they've been getting exams, CMP exams, like within two or three weeks. So they have come a long way in that regard. Not saying that they're sufficient. It's just the time, the time frame. A VA claims processor determines whether compensation and pension exam is needed. Exam is needed. If needed, the claims processor will identify if the CMP exam will be performed by a VHA examiner or a VA contract examiner. What I disagree about this is if needed, the training is, I don't think is there. Okay. Because when, right before I left, they had VSRs scheduling CMP exams. How do VSRs know what raters need to grant the benefit based off if the DBQ is actionable and sufficient? A lot of them look, well, I don't know. We didn't get trained on that. I'm just going to schedule the exam. And let the let the raider figure it out. And then if the raider's not trained properly, they're like, oh, well, you refused the exam, and that's it. They deny the claim. They're not even addressing the actionable and sufficient DBQ per 38 CFR 3.326, subpart B and subpart C. Let's keep going. It says before attending examination and or having a medical professional complete a DBQ, VA encourages veterans to become familiar with the guidance below. VA values evidence from a veteran's private treatment provider because they are familiar with the veteran's medical history often, often, 
over a long period of time. So before anybody says, oh, that examiner has to be treating you for a long time. They didn't say that. It says often. All right. VHA and VA contract examiners are trained to conduct CMP disability examinations. I'm 50 50 on that because I get a lot of feedback from veterans that watch my video. What to do when VA CMP third party examiners refuse to use a go neometer to measure their range of motion. So if you're training the VA, how you hold them accountable when the vet reaches out by submitting a VA form 21-4138 and say, hey, I went to this exam for a back condition and the examiner refused to use a go neometer. I took a go, go neometer and they said, oh, my experience, I know what to look for. Don't matter. You can't eyeball it. You're not that accurate, okay? So, yeah, I'm wondering what type of training that some of these uh, third-party CMP examiners get. Now, I believe that is in the VA's training for them in, the, in this particular situation. You just have some examiners not doing it, okay? So you got to call them out. I just did a video on that, all right? Um, the use of VHA examiners and VA contract examination um, vendors reduce claims processing time by increasing access to examination. Okay, so they should say the same thing about public DBQs. Hey, these public DBQs are out there for you to use, and if you submit it and they're actually more sufficient, it can increase you getting a decision a lot sooner because no examination should be necessary under 38 what? 38 CFR 3.326. Six subpart B subpart C. So I know I'm going to get some people. Oh, what about this or what about that? You know what? VA employees just do what you're, you're trained to do. All right. It says VA or a VA contract examiner will either mail a letter, email, or call with the appointment information. Prior to an examination, veterans may contact VA or VA contract examiner to confirm the exam date, time, and location. They omitted some information. Okay. This is what pisses me off. VA contract examiner to confirm, contact, uh, confirm the exam, date, time, and location. They should add the conditions that you're being reported for, that you're reporting for. Veterans, you need to know that information. I did a video, didn't get a lot of views because people didn't catch that nugget, okay? If you go to my channel, type in 2507 medical request. That is the examination request, the VBA employee that's requesting that exam sends to the third-party contract examiner saying, hey, we need you to conduct an examination on this, 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 and this. So if you call the VA or the VA contract examiner for the date, time, and location, oh, by the way, I need for you to look on that 2507 medical request that you got from VBA saying which exams I need to report for. Just don't think everything that you claim is on that exam. I made that mistake the first time I filed a claim in my first CMP exam. Okay. So I'm making sure you are aware so you don't make that mistake. Let's keep going. If a veteran has any questions concerning the CMP exam or needs to reschedule an appointment, they can contact the VA directly. Now, I agree with this. If you can't make it for any reason, what is the two things to do? Okay. One, call 800 827 1000. Hey, I can't make that exam. Can it be rescheduled because of X, Y, and Z? Okay, let them know what the good cause is. Guess what? I got a video on good cause, and I'm showing you the M21-1 manual reference talking about some examples of good cause. Okay, now, what else do you want to do? Fill out a VA form 21-4138. Submit it using the quick submit. Guess what? I got a video on quick submit. Just go to my channel, type in quick. And that video will come up and I'll walk you through. I'm walking you through how to upload documentation. All right, let's keep going. Items to consider when providing DBQs. VA will not pay or reimburse any expenses or costs incurred in the process of completing and or submitting DBQs. Now, you heard them talk about for-profit companies, right? Meaning doctors. What doctors do you know just going to treat you for free? I'm pretty sure there's some out there. I don't know of any. Even if you go to the VA to try to get treatment and you're not a certain percentage, you may have a small copay. 
They're not just going to up and see you for free if you're a veteran. Now, in some cases, they, they possibly can, okay? All right? But not in all cases, all right? So what are they talking about? Astronomical fees, these doctors, these doctors, they're not working for free. They went to medical school. They got a family to feed. They got a business to run. Yeah, veterans, you have to pay. Now, if you're smart, you may find your doctor that'll do it using your copay. That's another video I'm going to share with you, okay? Um, let's see. All clinician information blocks at the bottom of the DBQs must be completed, signed, dated by the clinician, completing the DBQ. They are right. I completely agree. When I was a VA Raider and they were training us, we had to look for that. They're looking for that. Make sure it's accurate and complete. So I don't think that was a lot of information. I'm going to put the link in the description section to this article and the link to the DBQs, public DBQs. Just keep in mind, do not Google these DBQs and get them off some random website. Get them from the VA's website, and I'm going to share that link with you. Now, again, if anybody tells you your private doctor cannot complete a DBQ, they're lying. I just showed you information on it, and there's information in the M21-1 manual reference and other 38 CFRs. Also, if somebody tells you they can guarantee you benefits, I don't care if it's a lawyer. They're lying to you, okay? If a straight shade tree VA claims agent, lawyer, VSO, whoever think they know this process, tell you they can guarantee it, that's a red flag. Don't believe it. I don't even tell veterans. I guarantee it. You can have everything. I can look at something and say, wow, you dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. You should be solid. And you submit it. It lands on the desk of a VA employee that's not an advocate for veterans. Yes, they're out there. And I've worked with some. Okay. No matter what you do right, if they want to deny it, they will deny it. And then you have to fight. Okay. So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button. And as always, do not forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.